This looks pretty familiar. Last week I did a video with a Porsche Cayman S, a 981, which I thoroughly enjoyed driving. Today I am with this absolutely stunning Porsche Cayman Non-S, also a 981, to give you guys an understanding of whether or not I think it is better to go for the S or the Non-S. I am really interested to see what this car is like to drive because literally the 3.4 engine that I drove in the S was really, really nice. Like it was plenty powerful, did the job for me and the car itself I thought was a really great car for around the 30K mark. This is slightly cheaper than the, uh, than the S and I think like, is it worth going for the extra 0.7 liters, that extra 700 cc's to go for one of these? Today, we're gonna to find that out exactly. So uh, yeah, <sighs> interesting. This should be quite a fun one. So if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe as well if you're new here. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> Let's do a quick overview of the spec. Let's not dwell on it too long, because I'm sure you've seen my previous video at this point, and if you haven't, make sure you go watch it where I overview that spec, but this one's quite a cool one. So let's jump straight into it. So as you can see, it is in racing yellow, which I think is a super nice color, and check out the number plate on it as well. Uh, pretty aggressive spec on the old number plate. But going around the car, so it is pretty much as you'd expect of a Cayman. So it is everything you'd expect, minus the fact it's got 911 wheels on it, as you can see here. So these wheels here are the ones off of the 911. And then if I was to go to the back of the car, the exhaust pipe on it is also the base exhaust. So similar to the previous car that we had, uh, it's got the standard exhaust pipe on the rear. Coming round as well to the front of the car, jumping inside it, you'll see that it doesn't have the Sport Chrono package either, but it does come with sat nav and all the other kind of fun stuff that, uh, that I didn't have on the previous Cayman. Uh, you can see also it's got the standard wheel on there too, or one of the standard wheel options on there as well. If I jump around here, jump inside the car, you can see the standard wheel here. So we, we would have seen in the previous video, it had holes in the steering wheel here to kind of jump through and it was a 718 steering wheel. This has got the standard one for the 981, which is really nice. Uh, but yeah, the interior in here is pretty cool too. It's got the Alcantara inserts on the seat, which I think is pretty nice too. And last time I made this video, I didn't include what the car was like in terms of practicality enough. So if you jump in here, you can see actually there's a load of space in there. I can literally put like most of my arm into the front of the car there. And if I jump around the back of the car as well, and uh, we jump into here, you can see there is also plenty of room in here so you can fit a couple of bags in there. There's also a couple of other little holders in there that you could chuck like wine bottles or whatever into. And the last thing to mention, if we get, jump in here, I, can't, I don't think it's on at the moment, but basically uh, this car generally does around about 33 to 35 miles per gallon on long motorway drives and around about 18 to 22 if it's having the foot uh, pressed down on the loud pedal too much. So there's that. And then also I think the average on this car so far has been about 26 miles per gallon uh, across its lifetime. So not too bad. Bad. With that in mind, let's jump into it now, take it for a drive and see if 700 cc's actually makes any major difference. So boys, two weeks in a row, two Porsches, very nice. And two of basically the same Porsche, just one having an S, uh, S attached to it. So we're going to take this on some nice roads now, see what it actually feels like in comparison to that 3.4. The moment I'm just cruising along nice and slowly, but there are some pretty cool roads in front of us uh, that we can sort of push down. So with that in mind, let's chuck it into sport mode uh, as an initial step. I'm going to leave it in automatic because one of the things that I realized from last week is that by messing around with uh, the paddles, even though I love to do that, uh, the, the, the gearbox on this is so nice and does a really good job on its own. It's way more intelligent than I am as a person. So let's just see how the car handles, responds and reacts. I take it out onto some reasonably nice roads here uh, out in Surrey. And uh, the best thing about them as well is that they are, um, they are national speed limit roads, which we always like. Okay, so we've got a nice dual carriageway in front of us here. And I think we can finally show what this PDK box actually does. So uh, if I just do a bit of that. We're gonna get beaten by a Tesla. We're gonna get beaten by a Tesla. No, we're not. Can't get beaten by a Tesla. <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. I mean, what you can see straight away is the gearbox just goes straight in and uh, and yeah, and does the job. And I mean, as you saw, 2.7 liters was plenty enough to beat that Model 3 back there. So we'll certainly have it. What I would say about this gearbox, and which I didn't talk about enough in the last video, is that it is, as I said, very intelligent. Like it really does the job and you don't really need the paddles. I am a, a manual fan. I love manual cars. And so when I get into cars like this, I want to use the, uh, I want to use the shifters. 
but you actually don't need to use them at all in this like it, it, it does the job for you instead and it does it better than you would do it so like if for example right now i'm cruising along in seventh um if i if i like drop the speed down a little bit and then i decide to just punch it it jumps from fifth gear to second gear like it's nothing so it just does the jump for you whereas if i was using my paddles i'd be clicking clicking clicking, clicking to get back down to to that but um but what i would say from the get-go is that the car in terms of pace really doesn't feel that different to the s like i didn't want to say that today when i came out i was thinking i was hoping that the 2.7 liter would feel less aggressive maybe less interesting and less powerful than the 3.4 but so far, I'm not seeing a huge amount of difference. Now I know that I didn't, I'm not gonna have a great amount of time in either this or the, or the S, but so far, the difference is pretty negligible. And I mean, if I put it back into, into non-sport mode and just cruise it along, the two cars feel effectively the same, um, which isn't a bad thing, by the way. I think that's a, that's a testament to how good the Cayman is and also the, the Cayman S. I think maybe where you might find a difference is in terms of like, if you were out on a track and you were putting in lap times, then yeah, maybe you would find a little bit of a difference. Um, but so far, I, I'm not feeling that 700 cc. I'm not feeling that 0.7 of a litre that the car is, is lacking from that perspective. I say lacking uh, in inverted commas there. But outside of that car, as same with the previous car, I'm not going to bang on about the same kind of stuff. It feels very comfortable to drive. Um, and, uh, and as I take it back onto some of these country lanes and stuff, there's a... Uh, hopefully I can show you guys just how well it handles around the corners because it does feel it, everything tightens up nicely as soon as you put it into sport mode one of the things I've been been told is that actually one of the differences between this and the S as well is that the S has a slightly higher top speed so this does theoretically around about the 175 mark and maybe the S does around 185 that kind of region I'll put something on screen if I'm wrong um, but I think that actually top speed in the UK at least doesn't matter at all if you're going out on German autobahns then yes of course doing 185 is better than doing 175 but then also at the same time you've got to have tires that are rated to do that as well so I mean it's, a, it's as I say it's much of a muchness with this car with the two cars so far I think maybe the benefit also having an S would be the spec options so on this you're, you're slightly limited on what spec options you can go for there's just fewer things that you can choose whereas with the S there was a slightly bigger set of stuff that you could go for from standard that that's the kind of thing if you really care about spec and there's something that you really wanted in, in your Porsche that you can't get in a standard Cayman then the S would might be able to offer it so the, the, yeah, the S might be able to offer it to you and uh, as we're going through this road trying to navigate ourselves around all the Surrey uh, cyclists I can show you guys that yeah it, I mean it pulls and it, it, it pulls ever so slightly less than the Cayman S ever so slightly but when I say that I really honestly mean ever so slightly it's not a it's not a, a huge difference when I got my foot down on the loud pedal it just goes like it does it does everything I need it to I think it's 5.3 ish seconds to 60 somewhere between 5 and 5.5 got a nice tight corner here hopefully there won't be a cyclist around it we're about to find out um, and yeah I mean the car weights up nicely it weights more towards the front end than towards the rear uh, benefit of obviously having a mid-engine car it comes through these corners super super chill like I don't even need to think about it and it I, I mean it gives a good sense of speed too like it feels like I'm going fast right now but not in like a dangerous way I feel like relatively comfortable I'm not pushing the car too hard obviously but yeah I mean it's bumpy here as well like if I came down here in my MX-5 it would be murder <laughs> at this speed absolute murder but coming through here in this it just rolls through like nothing's happening uh, and I think that's a real testament and, and every time I've driven a Porsche this is what I felt I felt this experience of like everything just feeling comfortable everything being done easily um, giving you the right sensation of like like you're driving a, a, a driver's car um, and I'm so glad that you don't lose that sensation of having a driver's car because you you lose the S badge is is what I think is what I think is important here. Like I still feel like I'm driving a sports car, a driver's car, a car that I can send through these roads and have a great time. Um, so with that in mind, like I think if I could find the right spec of this car, and if it was good YouTube content, which I'm not sure whether that is the case yet, I'd probably go for one. Like why not? It's a really nice car for the money. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I haven't done any sort of motorway driving in these, so I can't tell you what it's like longer from that perspective. But overall, again, like I would probably go for, if I, if I was in the market for a Porsche Cayman, a 981, I would consider a Cayman and a Cayman S, and I would focus my attention on spec. 
I wouldn't think too much about the yeah. engine. I would just think about spec. So with all that in mind, let's park the car up and do a very quick outro on my final thoughts about this very cool Porsche Cayman. So then final thoughts on this very lovely looking and very lovely driving Cayman. Yeah, as I said in the car, like if I was going to buy a Porsche Cayman today, I would have to really consider whether I go for an S or a non S. And the thing that would make the difference would be spec. So if there was a really important spec option on the S that I really wanted, then I would go for the S. If there was not, and I was getting everything I needed in terms of spec out of the non S, I would go for the non S. I wouldn't think too much about the engine, particularly when it is cheaper to tax one of these in an S and it's cheaper to run one of these in an S. The owner of the car put it really well, actually. The difference between like an Audi A3 and then an S3 and then an RS3 is pretty big jumps. Whereas the jump between this, the non S, and then the S is really small like the yes the engine is slightly more powerful in the s i felt that after a few pulls i did really feel that actually the the s is that little bit quicker but it's it's negligible it really is basic the the handling and stuff feels effectively the same in both cars the interior the comfort the quality all feels the same in this as it does to the s so then why would i necessarily spend the extra money to go for an s when i could just get just as good in this so yeah i mean to be perfectly honest i've been really impressed by this today you can make your own decision if you're looking in the market for an s or a non s you can let me know your thoughts and let me know in the comments down below what you think as well but me personally I will now probably go away, sit on Auto Trader for a couple of hours, look at non S's, and think to myself, hmm, do I want one of these in the not too distant future? So, uh, yeah. Again, a massive thanks to the owner of the car for letting me drive it. I had a really great time, and the car is, is a really lovely spec. Same with, uh, same with the last one. I mean, like, I, I, I'm a big Porsche fan, and I'm scared that I'm going to become too much of a Porsche fan and then only have Porsches for the rest of my life. Oh, it's a yeah it's a problem but yeah mass thanks to him mass thanks to you guys as well for watching and a huge thanks to the patrons for their support let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below but as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one Listen.